Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman, and I was talking to my nephew who is going through Computer Science 101, and he was confused because he kept hearing client-side and server-side, and in the cloud, and on your local machine, and it was getting confusing because they were teaching him JavaScript uh, via the Node programming environment, and he said, "Is where does JavaScript run? I ran the thing, I wrote some code, and I don't know where that code is running. This has been a confusing part of the web since the beginning of the web, when we were writing before JavaScript existed. We wrote things like VBScript, and it would exist on both the client and the server, and that was confusing. Uh, so let's talk about it. Let me split my screen here. I'm running Windows 11. I'm in Ubuntu in this tab. I'm in Windows in that tab. Doesn't matter which one makes you happy. Doesn't matter. I'm going to go and make a uh, My App folder, and I'm going to go in there, and you can see that it's empty. There's nothing going on here. And I'm going to run Visual Studio Code with code dot. I could run Notepad. I could run, you know, something else. Doesn't matter. And then I'm going to say new file. I'm going to say console dot log. Hello, this is my app. And then we're going to save this and we'll call it myapp.js. So we'll use JavaScript. And you see it just lit up there. And Visual Studio decided that that is been auto detected as JavaScript. I saved it as myapp.js. We can come back here. We can look at our directory again. We see we have a little program called myapp. And I can look at it and it says console.log. There we go. And I'm going to say, actually, you see how it's, when I do that, I end up getting my prompt right there again. That's because I didn't press enter. And then when I was outputting that, it didn't press enter on my prompt for me. So that's interesting. All right, I'm going to type node my app and it says, hello, this is my app. Is this on the client side or the server side? Well, there is no client or server here. There's only my computer. My computer is arguably the client for a non-existent server. We're just running this app locally. It runs and it goes away. We ran it, it went, it's back, it's gone, okay. That is JavaScript, and it's running as a command line application. This is the command line or the prompt in my terminal here. And that application ran, and then it went away. So it ran within the context of Node. Node knows how to speak JavaScript. It fires up this JavaScript engine, and it does the right thing. When you run an application from the command line that doesn't have any connectivity to the outside world, that is entirely self-contained and running on my computer. However, let's go into another folder. Let's go to this folder here called client versus server. And in this folder, I have a server.js. Let's take a look. I'm going to run Visual Studio Code again. We'll bring this up here. And in here, I have a server.js. Doesn't matter what it's called, but I named it server.js. And it's not called myapp.js. And in here, we say, I'm going to use HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol, and we're gonna write a little server, a little server that a client's gonna to talk to. So we make our server, and this is a little cheesy, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if the URL, if the address has a backslash, it's only a backslash, or excuse me, in this case, a forward slash, we're gonna output some HTML. We're gonna say, this is a home page. And then if you hit slash student, we're gonna say this is the student page. And if you hit slash admin, we'll say this is the admin page. And we're gonna listen on port 5000. Ports are like windows into your house. The computer is my house, the port is a window. So we're gonna be peeking our head out of one window. The one we're gonna listen on is 5000. And it's gonna go ahead and start up. So what I'll do is I'll switch back over here and I'm gonna say node server.js, just like I said node my app and I ran the other one. I'm gonna run this one and here it says web server at port 5000 is running. Now look at this. Remember before when we said console.log, we said, you know, hello, this is my app. Here I'm also saying console.log and I'm outputting that we're running on this port. But then we have this other thing called server that's doing other, other work. All this other code we didn't see any, any output there, did we? We only saw this. So that is running on my local machine and my app is running and it's listening. It's listening on port 5000. Now I'm gonna put myself in the corner here. We're gonna bring up our browser. We'll put our browser over on the right, okay? And what I'll do actually is I'm gonna put myself in the center here, okay? So here's our server. This is our server on this side. And this is our client over on this side. They happen to be on the same computer, but pretend for a second that this is over here. This server, that could be an Azure, or that could be an Amazon, that could be some other computer somewhere else. 
And over here, this is you. You're on your phone. You're on your computer. You're doing something. And I'm going to type in localhost 5000 in the, in the URL here. And it says, this is the home page. Cool. Let's hit slash student. This is the student page. So we just, on our client, on our client up here, our web server, we hit localhost, which is my, my local computer, the machine I'm on here. Looking in that window, that port, port 5000 slash student, and we saw some HTML. We saw some HTML. I can actually move myself down over here, and I'm going to right-click and say view source. This is the student. We can actually see the HTML right there, and we can see how it presented itself. So here's the source code for the web application. But this isn't JavaScript. This isn't JavaScript at all. There's no source code there. It's just how that was presented. But when we look over here in uh, Visual Studio Code, okay, on the student page, we see that right there. Look. It says, if the URL is slash student, we're going to output this is HTML, and then we're going, to we're going to write out to the response. We're going to write out to the response, this is the student page. If I right-click over here and I say, uh, view source, this text right here, okay? This text right here, right here, on the server, was written out to the response and it got sent over to the client, right? And our client's over here now. And that's how that, that's how that string got there. Now where things get confusing is, well, what code runs on the client? What code runs on the server? Let's take a look at this. This is a little complicated, but we're going to go through it together. Okay. I've added three windows now. Okay. So first we've got our little console app. That's kind of telling us what's happening. It's a console running on the server. Then we've got our source code up there inside of Visual Studio Code. And then we've got our browser, our client over here on, on the right. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit the home page here. I'm going to hit enter. So watch what happens here when I press enter here. Look at that. I'm going to hit refresh a bunch of times. I'm just going to push the refresh button. In the server, in the server, in the server. What's that? That line of code is this line of code. Okay. So what we're doing is we're outputting this is the home page and outputting in the server at the exact same time. So we sent information to our window here and we sent information to our client over here. So this way, the programmers can like look in the logs and see what's going on, and they can debug things, and they can say, I don't know. But mom and dad don't see that, right? The clients don't see that. They only see what happens on the client side. So as a person browsing the web, I just see this. I'm just doing my thing. But on the back end, the back end is the server side. You hear about the front end, the client, and the back end, the server. On the back end, there's things happening. We're writing out to the response. And we are saying, for logging purposes, hey, we're on the server. Now, here's where things get squishy. He said, yeah, but I need to write JavaScript on the client side. I need to do client side JavaScript. But I just wrote this whole thing that is server side JavaScript. So what I've done here is something you shouldn't do. This is not good. But I'm just showing you this for educational purposes. Notice this line 10 right here. OK, we've got this is the home page. And I've got some inline script. So I'm going to send some JavaScript along with my HTML over to the browser, over to the browser. And that script is going to run. Now, we've seen console.log before. We saw console.log just a minute ago, right? Console.log saying, hey, I'm on the server. But this console.log is going to say, hey, I'm in the browser. They're both JavaScript. They're both JavaScript, but browsers come understanding JavaScript out of the box. So what we're going to do is we're going to press F12, the F12 button. Okay, we're going to press F12, and what I'm going to do is go like this, I'm going to go like that, and then we're going to hit refresh. So you're going to watch on the server here, and then you're going to see in the browser right here. There you go. 
Okay. Hit refresh. So each time I'm hitting refresh, the server listens on that port 5000, runs its code. It runs this console.log in the server. It sends that response over to the client, sends that response over to the client. The client then receives the HTML and says, oh, this is the home page. Inside of that HTML is also, we saw some embedded JavaScript. We sent some JavaScript along for the ride. And that said in the console, the console that we got from our dev tools or our F12 tools said in the browser, in the browser. So in this case, we have JavaScript on the server and JavaScript on the client. But if we remember that the person on the front end, the user, non-technical parent, they're experiencing this. They probably won't ever even see this console.log here. That can be debugging for you, the developer. But that's an interesting way to think about the client and the server. Okay. If you like beginner videos like this, let me know in the chat what you think we should talk about in the future. I do realize that for some of you, this is very 101 beginner level content, but this was a question that my nephew had, and now I wanted to put it out there on the internet because apparently they didn't teach it in school. And I would encourage you to check out my other videos on computer stuff they didn't teach you in school. Thanks a lot. And uh, subscribe, please.